Hey, hello. So today a video to demonstrate uh, how I use the Kiox, how I integrated with my uh, iPhone via the eConnect app and um, how I keep my phone charged. Then we'll go for a little ride and I'll show you some of the uh, basic features of the Kiox uh, display. And of course, all of it installed in this uh, beautiful 2020 Cube Stereo Hybrid 140. HPC SL6259 e mountain bike that I simply love. So um, what I like about the Kiox system mostly is the Bluetooth. With the Bluetooth you can transfer all the information from the motor, the battery, your cadence, your the power that you are developing onto your iPhone and on the Kiox you can also connect your heart rate monitor. So the Kiox captures all that information, stores it on your phone and then from your phone you can upload it to the uh, eBike Connect uh, website of Bosch. You create an account which I did off camera um, and you can also on that account connect to other uh, workout accounts such as Strava. I like to keep my workouts on two platforms because these startups and these platforms sometimes they last five years, sometimes they last ten years, you never know. So uh, so I was saying before I got interrupted that um, I like to have my workouts saved to a couple of uh, websites in case one of them goes offline, goes bankrupt, something like that, then I can uh, use the other one and save my rides there. So um, with the e-bike connect you can um, receive all those parameters and then transfer them to the Bosch website as I said before. Of course um, you need Bluetooth for your heart rate monitor, you use Bluetooth for kiosk so when you start, when you put your uh, Bluetooth monitor strap on, around your chest it starts transmitting and the first one to capture it is your iPhone. Therefore what I do, ah and of course if the iPhone captures your heart rate monitor then the Kiox won't and what I want is to transfer my heart rate frequency to the Kiox. Therefore on my iPhone what I do is I go into the settings and I switch off the Bluetooth to start with then I start the eBosch Connect app and today I have already started one ride a few minutes ago and um, one thing about the app is that it will create a line with a date, total distance and then several other lines below that look light grey with the different rides of the day. So when you switch off your Kiox at, at the end of a ride it considers that ride finished. If you switch it on after for another ride the same day it will not reset completely, it will only reset the day after, so it will not reset and it will add a second line, it will then the app will add those Kiox rides and at the end you'll have a total. So um, what I do is I connect my iPhone to the bike, okay, then I switch on my Bosch, normally on the display you would see different things, in this case service due, the um, Kiox software keeps track of your kilometers and suggests that you have a service. Normally this one is after 400 kilometers, but because of the lockdown, the, all the bike shops are closed, I have not been able to service it. So what you do is just you wait a few seconds or you press the button and you say OK. Then uh, I go to the page to check if my heart rate is being... Um, received there it is heart rate there and then i can then switch on again the bluetooth on my iphone i don't risk my heart rate monitor being connected to the phone i want it connected to the uh, uh, kiosk all right then as i will start on the right a um, another line will be created here as we will no doubt be able to see 
As you have seen, I have switched between different pages on the display. Um, the Kiox from Bosch is integrated with, it comes with a thumb drive with plus and minus, left and right, and a selector in the middle. It has also an on-off button on the display itself, and it has one button if in case you have an integrated lamp. I really like the way that uh, um, Cube has integrated the Kiox on this bike. Instead of using this central location, it has used an acid mount to set it aside. Two things are nice. It frees up the space for my phone. And the second thing is that in case you fall, this is one of the most protected spots. So you can have an impact from here, an impact from the top, but very rarely you will get an impact from the side and below. So very good idea. I really like that very much. One thing I'd like to say about the Bosch is that uh, the Kiox, I mean, is that if you want to leave your bike unattended for a few minutes, you can remove it. So it's magnetically um, held into place. You can see here the two magnets. Then there's these contacts that you must keep clean. And in case you have a problem and something breaks, you see you have the computer on a separate, um, let's say, case. And here you have the holder separate with the cables. So you just have to fix whatever got broke. Okay, so I'm going to put this back on. It, when I put it on, you have to listen for a click. Okay, clicks. One of the things I like to do is to keep my phone connected, charged. So there's a charge port on the, let's say, uh, side. And I purchased this cable online. It's a micro USB to lightning cable. And I just go in here. I think I have to turn it this way because uh, micro USB is not uh, applicable on both sides. Then I try to find the routing where the cable does not bother me so much. Yeah, there you go. And then I just connect my iPhone and it should start charging. But I always have little. It's not because of the cable itself, it's because of the case. So I have to fiddle around and there it is, it's charging. So this cable is not to transfer any data. It's just to keep my iPhone charged. Good. So let me show you the pages before we go for a ride. This is the assistance level page in kilometers per hour. On top you have uh, one line of information, the time, the mode of assistance, tour is blue, it's the second mode, eco is green, as you can see. Then you can go up to e-mountain bike, which is magenta. Then you have turbo, which is the uh, highest level of assistance. So I like to ride in tour mode. On the top right you have the battery in percentage, which is very nice. On the previous displays, such as uh, Intuvia, you would have five bars and you have to estimate approximately how much how many kilometers each bar would last, it would not be linear. In this case you have a percentage indicator. Then as you can see on the bottom there's different dots and those indicate the pages available. On this page you have the clock and the range, estimation. On this page you have the trip distance that you have already ridden, which I did coming from home. And you have the trip time, five minutes. You have the power that your legs are developing and your cadence pedaling cadence. You have the average speed in kilometers per hour and you have a maximum speed. Then on the uh, on my favorite page you have uh, much of the uh, information available. On top you have the kilometers per hour on the top line. You see it, the clock was replaced with the kilometers per hour. And then you have distance, range, power and heart rate. I like to keep an eye on that. I wish this page was customizable. I would replace one of this information, such as the range, I don't really need it, with a cadence indicator. So I have to look into the manual to see if this is available. Then you have one, one other page with a heart rate, just a heart rate, and you have a page with a total distance, which is the odometer, 653 since I purchased the bike, and the calories that it estimates I've burned. And on the first 
let's say page you have uh, on top kilometers per hour the mode the battery then the clock e-bike battery percentage the mobile battery percentage because now they're talking via bluetooth then a bunch of icons that show you that you um, are connected with bluetooth that the gps is available and functioning and your heart rate monitor is connected and i think that the first icon on the left which i didn't talk about is that um, somehow it detects an iphone i don't know maybe then it shows you the last time it was synced i want to say a word about that uh, the um, kiox uh, stores the write data for about 10 minutes and then in one in after those 10 minutes it transfers it to the uh, phone so what could happen is that you're riding along you look in here you see oh something is wrong my I'm not my kilometers are all displayed so you have to wait for those 10 minutes for the next sync would be at 17 for, uh, 53 and um, then it would send the last 10 minutes information to the phone then at the bottom you have the settings in the settings you can change things like wheel size which i did i like to put the slow the smallest wheel size onto the computer so that he thinks that i'm going slower because i want the cutoff speed the real cutoff speed to be higher you have to think about it if you give it a small diameter it calculates number of tours times the small diameter and gives you a less speed indication although you're going faster so the less speed it indicates the less speed it displays the fastest you can go until it cuts off i have also compared the gps speed with the speed indicating here and there's a huge difference sometimes five kilometers per hour so i have reduced the uh, wheel diameter in the settings to uh, make it work for me of course in the beginning you have to pair uh, you have to pair the phone with the Bosch, you have to create an account, you, you know, make everything work. I did that offline some months ago. And um, now a few words about the eConnect app. There's a page about feed. In that page it gives you a summary of your overall distance. The um, distance this month, the best month and the last month. So it gives you an idea of how much you've been working out. Then it gives you average speed, ascent, descent, this is not working, then calories burned. And then it starts with some uh, explanations on how it works, the ongoing activity, and then um, explaining how to track activities with your phone. It does some information about the different motors available it's like a web page really updates available and if you have a, a firmware update you download it here then you sync it to your uh, bosch kiosk and uh, okay here they are saying please update the e-bike connect app which i did months ago and so on and so forth web portal so you can read through this and then it's like really a feed like a web page then on the other um, how can i say tab you will have your activities you can pull down to have it synced manually sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't then it says sync just recently as you can see the sync time did not change on the kiosk but here it says synced recently and uh, well i've not been writing so maybe that's correct if you click on the right itself, it shows you the map of what you've been writing and it gives you some uh, extra information, average cadence, heart rate and so on. Here you can see graphically uh, speeds, altitudes, cadence, heart rate and power. Very nice. And here is a page which I like as well. Depending on the mode that you selected, it will give you what the percentage the power delivered by the motor and the percentage power delivered by yourself and the different modes so writing here i was in eco mode for 94 percent of the time and then a little bit tour mode a very nice feature overall i think then you have just a map so you can find your way around it says powered by scout open street maps well as much as i like the open street maps i prefer the open cycle maps 
because they have more information about bike paths uh, that are not on the streets and uh, walk paths that you can sometimes uh, ride on without uh, any problem. Then on this page, on this tab, my bike, you have the Kiox. It says it's connected, which is a nice thing to know. And then there's some information about your e-bikes, like serial numbers, uh, battery serial number, and uh, firmware, uh, all of that. I don't want to display it to you because it's uh, private information. And then you've got some more settings and so on and so forth. One of the nice things, like I said, about this is that it's all transferred to the cloud, to the website of Bosch. Then you go on your iPad at home after you finish your ride, and then you say from there, you select your uh, workout of the day and you say, send it up to Strava, and then you have it on Strava as well. Okay. Um, by the way, Strava is not recording the heart rate monitor anymore. They had some uh, stability issues, so they removed heart rates from their app. And um, with this setup, you can again record your heart rate and then send it to Strava, so you have a heart rate uh, monitoring. Um, what other apps do I maintain on when I'm riding? Well, the Bosch Bike Connect is one. I don't use Strava, I do mountain bike from Runtastic. It's not supported anymore. One of the features I liked about it, I will say very quickly, is the choice of maps. And I like the open street map and the open cycle map, sorry, this one. In this case, I use the offline map, and as you can see on the dotted lines, these are all the uh, off-road bike paths, and uh, I really like it. So I keep this one on. The heart rate monitor will not be connected to that, which is nice. I have, I have had uh, cases where, uh, for some reason, the heart rate monitor stops displaying here, and it starts displaying there. So what I do is I go to Bluetooth, I switch off the Bluetooth function, I see it appearing here again, then I go back again and I switch on the Bluetooth function, and then everything is working uh, uh, well again. Good. So that's one of the views, and then um, I don't... Ah, yes, I use the WhatsApp uh, to send my uh, geographical position to my wife in case I fall and I can't move again. She knows where I am, she can send help. Uh, in case you see, see I'm stopped moving, normally if I stop moving she asks, you know, if is everything okay? And uh, if I don't answer then she goes on to the next uh, level, I would say. So let me go back to the by connect. I'm going then to um, click here, I'll just let it be like that and we go for a ride, okay? So, here we go. <coughs> I'll try to make this a short ride, <coughs> because there's no point in going for hours and hours. I will try to put my camera in the wrong position. Here we go. All right. Good. So as you may be able to see or not, depending on I can get this situation straightened out. This is my favorite page. It displays the power that I'm delivering with my own legs, my current heart rate, the total distance of my ride, and the range. One thing I'd like to say about the range is that it's an estimate, a rough estimate. It, uh, I don't know what they base it on, if it's on a logarithm that is fixed, or if they use uh, the last information from your previous rides and they try to guess it from there. In any case, it's just a rough estimate because um, it depends on the terrain, the temperature of the day, which will affect the internal resistance of the battery. It depends how fit you are, if you have good legs, it depends on how heavy you are, and so on. Hey, hello! Come on. Ah, I like this. Yeah, here we go. Good. 
Ah, beautiful day to ride. But I had a ride yesterday. I had a ride the before yesterday and my legs need some rest. And I really wanted to talk about the kyoks. So I just recording. Yeah. All right. Good. So let's have a look at the uh, first page. As you can see, it displays perfectly the level of assistance. Now I'm going downhill, so it won't be assisting me at all. And here, there you go. All right. Good, 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 good. Now. I'm going to go down very slowly because I'm actually looking for a part of uh, my lamp that I fell off the other day and I'm not sure where. So I'm just hoping I will find it. There's something annoying me about this uh, is that it cracks about my control column. I have to fix that. Ah. Some nice people riding about. Moyen. 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 Ah, oui, Shane. Merci. So if it fell off anywhere here. It should be around this place. Yeah, probably it's somewhere under a plant or a rock. Or somebody picked it up. When I uh, drop my uh, back seat, the lamp that is attached to my saddlebag just rubs on the tire and the cover fell off. That's what I was looking for. Anyway, let's ride it a bit longer. Now, after this, I'm going to go home and try to sort this uh, cracking uh, issue. I think I know why it's cracking now. This part here is too vertically tight. I might have uh, placed too much tension on that screw. And then it cracks. Sounds awful. So I'm going to uh, stop recording here on one last uh, thing is to demonstrate how to properly synchronize your um, ride when you finished with your e-bike connect. Okay, let me see if I can turn it in the direction for a video. Okay, I hope this works. Right, so the proper way to uh, sync, force the synchronization because you see it was synced five minutes ago I'm going to come back to the page 1807 it's now 1813 so 
if you have a look at your your two lines the second line is now displaying root is not available for this activity what i'm going to do to force the synchronization is not to switch it off neither to pull this down because it doesn't work let's have a look synced just recently let's have a look and it's still not synced so what you do is that you remove the kiox from the cradle and then it will cycle through the different menus and it will force a synchronization with the app it will cycle all the information twice then it will switch off so just in a few seconds it should all be synchronized so that's once That's twice, then off. Yeah, there you go, see you. Now let's have a look. Here is the ride, the last bit that was missing. And if I go back, you see that there's one activity, two activities, and then there's a total for the two rides. So I hope this helps giving you an idea about the Kiox product, how it works, the features it has, and if maybe this would be a good option for you. It comes standard on the Cube Stereo Hybrid uh, HPC 140 SL 625-29. Uh, this bike is equipped with 29 inch wheels, it's equipped with a Shimano group set and brakes, and the Bosch new generation motor the Kiox. It's a, and it has a dropper post. So a great bike to have. A lot of fun and uh, I highly recommend it. All right, take care. So after your ride, uh, you have uh, disconnected uh, the Kiox from the bike. It has uh, synchronized via Bluetooth to the eBike Connect um, app on your iPhone and thereafter uh, via 3G or Wi-Fi everything is transmitted to uh, the Bosch website and here you can see is their dashboard so you have all the information uh, that is displayed on the first page of the eBike Connect app and what I wanted to show you is how to upload your activities to Strava after you have done them so here's today 8th of April the three activities that I have done so going to the woods, the ride down the woods, and the ride back. The total is uh, 4.58 kilometers. So you have an option, you can either synchronize, and here it is, the options. You can synchronize to Strava, export to Strava, the whole thing, the three rides in one go, or you could go one by one and select any of them or all of them and export them to Strava and it's um, of course off camera you have to set up uh, the uh, e-bike connect website to connect to Strava go in the options and then you have to introduce your email uh, and uh, um, what do you call it um, password so um, after you've done that which I have done off camera then you can every day after your ride you come here you have a look at it you agree with it and then you export it to Strava then it looks like this and there it is the activity was uploaded to Strava and soon I will get a notification on my iPhone and there it is saying your activity is ready to view and from there you can add it more information uh, including pictures and which type of uh, ride and bicycle that you've used. Voila, hope this helped. Take care.